So, hi everyone. Um, today I have the privilege of speaking with Katie Day. Uh, for those of you who don't know Katie, Katie is running a successful team in Houston. She's crushing it on social media. Uh, and she's well known nationally for her business performance and marketing expertise. Katie actually joined Rio back in 2015, and then she left us in 2017. And recently she came back uh, about six months ago, I think. Um, and I had the privilege of finally meeting Katie in person uh, two weeks ago in Las Vegas, which was great after five years of knowing each other. Um, so Katie, first of all, thank you very much for being here today. I'm really excited about this call. I think we have uh, an inter interesting history that we should uh, maybe try and talk about here. But uh, first, can you uh, introduce yourself, please? After that intro, I don't, I don't know what to say, no. But um, yeah, so I couldn't stay away from real, had to come back, um, really excited to be back um, at the brokerage and with everyone here. Um, so yeah, I got into real estate. I got licensed in 2015. Um, didn't really do anything then. It was like the end of the year. Uh, did it part-time in 2016. And then in 2017, went full-time um, and did depart real for a little while. Um, and basically, you know, started selling real estate 2017, 2018, started a team. Um, and then um, just kind of have continued to grow the team 2018, 19, 20, 21, because I guess that's the year right now, 2021. Um, and a couple months ago, just came back to real. Um, and I'm really excited for, you know, all of the, the growth and, and kind of the community that we're building here. Great. Um, so let's go back to 2017 for a second. Uh, for me, when you left, um, I, I wouldn't say I took it personally, but I took it seriously because, you know, you were this up and coming real estate star and we could see that that something's happening in your business you were just starting in 2015 and we could see you ramping up and and uh, and and progressing and when you left i was asking myself what is going on and why is someone like katie leaving real and what are we missing what are we missing to really make people like katie happy so uh, we, we, we kind of kept in touch and every few months, yeah. uh, I would reach out, ask you how you were doing uh, every now and then I would ask, when are you coming back home? And, uh, and my question is, and I probably never asked you that, um, what made you leave Rio back then in 2017? What was missing? Um, I don't know that it was anything that was necessarily missing. So, you know, I think that. And honestly, like, I don't even remember how I had found real. Like, I think it was just that, like, I saw an ad or, or I saw like a thing and I was like, oh, like, you know, uh, high, high um, commission percentage and whatever. I was like, that sounds good. Like, that's, that's what I need. Right. And, and so I was just like, let me sign up. And like, you know, I really liked everyone I met and everything. Um, but I had a friend that was a um, commercial broker and we had just kind of kept in touch. Um, and, and I'd actually like sold him a bib for a half marathon. So like, that's how we met. And he ended up getting promoted to um, from being an agent to being a manager of a local office. And he like, would just like kind of recruited me pretty hard. He's like, you need to come in, you need to like meet with me, you, you know, whatever. And like, um, yeah. So it's just like a very good friend of mine, you know, really wanted me to come work with him. So I was like, all right, like, let me try this out. So it wasn't even really anything that it was like, oh, this is missing. So whatever. It was really just like, you know, my buddy wanted, wanted us to work together and um, yeah. So I don't know. And that's like, I feel like that was the conversation we had back in like 2017. You're like, well, I don't understand. And I'm like, I, I don't know. Like I, my friend wants to hang out some more. I like, so I don't know. Yeah. That's a terrible answer, but you know. Uh, no, I mean, it happens very frequently that, that agents are leaving brokerages to follow friends and just be around people that they like and, yeah. uh, and resonate with. So it's, it's not a, it's a typical story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like, special there. no, yeah, right. Like it wasn't like this, like this, like defining moment of my life that I was like, oh, this is, this is the direction I need to go. And it was literally like, my buddy was like, come see my office. And I was like, I totally understand what an office is. It's like four walls. And like some walls inside and some desks and like a printer, like I'm good, man. Like he's like, well, will you just come by and like, you know, come say, Hey. And I'm like, 
sure. And I go in and I like meet with him. And then I realize like, I'm in like jeans and a t-shirt similar to like what I'm wearing now. And I realized when he like tosses me in the office with another person, I was like, oh, he just completely bamboozled me into interviewing with them. Like I realized I was like sitting in an interview. I'm like, shoot, you know, this is, this is not what I came here for. I came here to see your office and now I'm like in an interview. So it was all very like kind of unexpected, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, we definitely um, have to touch over. So fast forward four years, uh, yep. what made you rejoin Rio? Um, yeah, so, you know, obviously we, we had kind of kept in touch over that, that time period and, um, you know, I saw everything that was happening and, you know, I had a little bit of that like FOMO moment as I'm seeing a lot of my friends um, and people that I knew across the country, joining people that I knew um, that were looking to join in other countries, you know, Brad up in Canada. Um, and it was definitely something that I was like, I had always, you know, kept an eye on the model, kept an eye on real, kept an eye on, you know, other brokerages that had similar things going on like that, uh, but was like completely happy where I was. Um, but you know, I don't know. It was just like wanting to be in the room and collaborate with the people that were here. And, you know, I think that, um, you know, for me where I was before, you know, I, I had some opportunities to do so, but like the amount of collaboration that we have here real and the amount of conversations that we have and, and the things like that we're all doing to try to help each other level up, I think is just way more, um, prevalent than it is with other, you know, national brokerages that I've looked at and also been a part of. Um, so yeah, it initially came from like a, a FOMO moment of like Tim and Brad and, and Jeremy, you know, and, and Ian and all of these friends of mine that like I hung out with on a regular basis. Um, and then I was like, you know what, like, I can't let you guys have all the fun. So, um, you know, had to, had to come join. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, it seems like it's the same reason that, that made you leave Rio, made you come back to Rio. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. So so that, that leads me to, uh, to ask, and, and we'll talk about, we'll focus on you in a second. Uh, when you think about Rio back in 2017 and Rio in 2021, what are the main differences that you see? Um, yeah, I mean, I think obviously like there's way more agents, right? So I think that, you know, that's, that's the bigger thing. I think that like, although like not having, you know, local offices or not having stuff like that, like, I think there still is a lot of community, um, which even, even back then, like, you know, 2016, whatever, like we were doing like happy hours, we were doing get togethers and things like that, but like not the level that that's occurring now. Um, you know, and I think that like, even, you know, nationally we're planning things, um, you know, a few months ago, a, a bunch of us got together, you know, kind of like the, the social media video people, like we got together to like, talk about like, you know, ways that we can all level up in different, you know, uh, different areas and things like that. We're planning on doing it again, you know, sometime in Q1 um, and, and just trying to, you know, get together and, and share what's, what's working well in our markets and, and what's working well for our business. So um, yeah, I mean, I think that the community is the biggest aspect. I think that like the amount of training and, you know, courses and everything, and obviously over time, all of this like gets recorded too. So like, the amount of stuff that you can like look back at and watch as well is super beneficial um, as well as like the live training and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think it's a completely different company now. I mean, and I think the the values are the same and, and the, the ideals are the same, but like, you know, the, the energy is just, I think a lot different than, you know, it was back then. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Um, there are things that, that still remain the same. I think that the, the core mission of making agents' lives better hasn't changed, but yeah, I mean, we're publicly traded. The momentum is different. The people that are on board are different. The amount of knowledge that we have now within the company is probably 10 times uh, higher or bigger. So uh, let's talk about you and your business. Um, tell us a little bit about your team and, and what's unique about it. Um, yeah, so... Um the team. We started it in 2018 um, and have had, you know, a lot of different, um, you know, iterations of it, I guess you could say. But, you know, right now we're sitting at about, we have nine agents um, and three admin. Um, and I think some of the things that make us different, um, 
you know, I think a lot of people will like kind of band together and say that they're a team, but they don't really do much together. Um, like, uh, professionally, they don't do much together personally. They don't, you know, they're just kind of like a group for the sake of like, you know, saying that they're a group. Um, but you know, we do things together professionally. So we have, you know, like huddles where we kind of go over different numbers and, and things that people are doing. We have, um, you know, role play where we'll go over scripts and, and things like that. We have team meetings. We meet weekly together on a, on a weekly basis in person um, and stuff like that. Um, and then like, you know, we actually enjoy hanging out with each other outside of work. So, you know, we will do like happy hours. People do like go out to dinner with each other and hang out and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I think that that's something that is, you know, I want to, as we continue to grow our team, um, maintain that culture. Um, and then I think that like, we're all, you know, full-time agents. So like everyone takes it seriously and like, this is like their job, right. They're not just like selling a house, you know, like every six months or something like that, you know, everyone that's on the team wants to, wants to, you know, produce. Got it. Um, and I'm following you on Instagram as, as you know, and it always seems to me as if you're living a life of three people. You have so many hours in a day. You wake up very early. You go to the gym. You, you exercise. You train. You work. Uh, and it really seems like you accomplish much more than, than the average person. So do you have any, any system of managing your time? How, how, does it, how does it happen that you're managing to do so many things during 24-hour periods? Um, well, it's cause I'm up at 4am. So like, you know, when the day starts at four, you can get a lot done. I mean, it's like 10am yeah. here right now. So like, you know, I can get a lot done between, you know, uh, four and 10. No, but, um, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing, honestly, is waking up early. Um, you know, I think it, it continues to be an earlier wake up. Like I used to get up and go to the gym at 6am. Um, so I would wake up at like five, five thirty, and, and whatever. And now like going to the gym at five, you know, and being done by six, six thirty, and being home and like taking a shower and, and like starting to work earlier, like you can get a lot more done than like the people that are like, Oh, I'm gonna like roll it about at 8am and like, you know, yeah. drink a cup of coffee and then get going. So, um, you know, that's when I'll normally get a lot of stuff done that like, you know, kind of admin work and stuff that you can do like uninterrupted. Um, but I don't know. I also go to bed really early. So like, I, I think people are always like impressed by the fact that I get up at 4am, but I'm like, I'm also in bed by like 9pm. So like, it's not, it's yeah. not like I'm like, it's not like it's that impressive. Is, is waking up early something that you're trying to teach your, uh, your team members as well, or <laughs> is, it, is it something that you keep for yourself? Um, so we've had challenges where we've done like early wake-ups. Um, not everyone, actually not even not everyone, most people on the team are not morning people. Um, and that's actually something that okay. we talk about in interviews now, because like we do have a daily huddle every morning or a meeting every morning at like 8.30. So like, you know, I'll, I'll give them a pass or two when they first start, but like, I, I'm like, I need you like on caffeinated and like ready to like work by 8.30. So like, if that's going to be an issue for you, like, let's like figure it out. Um, yeah. But yeah, we have done, we have done challenges before we did one at the beginning of the year where like everyone had to get up and send a selfie by 6am. Um, because like, and they, they chose it. Like, I don't, if I don't really care as long as like, they're like working by the time they need to work. Um, but like they chose to do that. And then like, everyone was upset that like, they had to like send these selfies. And I'm like, you guys, you guys chose this like challenge and the picture thing. Like I was completely fine with you waking up whenever you wanted to. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I reached out to you and, and told you, hey, Katie, you're so great on social media. How can I become like you? And you said, you know, just share, just, you know, take pictures and share your, your day to day. And I've been trying to do that. I think I've, I've been improving. Maybe I'm uploading, I don't know, one, two, three stories a day, which yeah. is far more than I have before. But um, how has social media contributed to, to your business or to your business growth? Yeah. Um, so I think like a lot of times people think that like, especially for a real estate agent that you're going to post on social media and then start getting buyers and sellers that are going to like message you and be like, Hey, I want to buy a house or, Hey, I want to sell my house. And like, that doesn't, that's not really how it works. Like, you know, I've always kind of done the social media thing. Um, and you know, with trial and error, I've gotten better at it. But like in the beginning, like I never got those messages. Also, I was only posting like just listed, just sold. And like, it was terrible. But um, it probably took like a year to a year and a half. One of my, 
first transactions in 2018 was someone that DM'd me and said like, Hey, I want to buy a house. I've been following you for a while. Can you help me? And like, we had a consultation and, and all that, but like, normally it's like, we have a conversation. You're like, Oh, I know a real estate agent in Houston. You, like you should look her up. And then you look me up and follow me and then forget about it. And then like, I start popping up on your stuff. And then at, at a later date, you say something. Um, so I think like people think it's going to be consumers, honestly, like the agent to agent stuff on social media is like more of a driver. So like by going to conferences, like admin and by going to, you know, different things, you meet with other agents and, and exchange contact information and whatever. If you follow those people on social media and they follow you back, like the probability of getting like agent to agent referrals is a lot higher from social media than just getting like a consumer saying, Hey, I want to buy a house. Um, so, I mean, that was something in the beginning I was like, God, all these agents are following me, but like, I think that it's, it's good because then like, it's, it's opening you up for more business. Um, and, and that's become a pretty, you know, significant driver for our business. Um, you know, is, is like the agent agent referrals from agents across, you know, the country. Did, did you ever try to quantify that and measure that contribution to, uh, to your revenue, for example? Um, as far as like social media posts to like actual money in, like not really. Um, okay. Like I, um, people always ask that, like, what's the ROI on videos or what's the ROI on whatever? Like it, it's more so like it needs to be there as, as like a baseline of, of whatever. Um, but I mean, like now that we have like, you know, whatever, uh, more data and everything, 25% of our business comes from directly from Instagram and YouTube. So like, I know how much money we make off of it. Right. But like, that's years upon years of like content and videos and posts and DMs and like, you know, all of the things. So it's not like, Hey, I post a video and I make 10 grand. Like if I did, I would post way more videos, but um, you know, so, so we have like numbers. Yes. But it's not like a direct correlation, I guess. Got it. You mentioned uh, Inman and uh, two weeks ago we were in Vegas at the Inman event and you were invited to be on stage and talk about uh, lead conversion and nurturing and all of that. Yeah. How did it feel to be on stage? In front I was of, surprised. of thousands of people. You know, I was surprised they let me up there. I was like, I, I, uh, you know, I never, I normally don't have much to say. So, you know, <laughs> um, no, it was, it was an absolute honor to be up there. Um, I think that it's, it's really cool to be able to share, you know, what, what has worked well for our business. Um, and, um, you know, it, it was good. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't stutter or curse. So I thought that that was a win and, and <laughs> yeah, people told me that they found value in what I said. So I was like, all right, must, must have done all right. So, well, you, you know, people are polite, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I, I think you, you, you looked really natural uh, there. And, uh, and I think that, you know, this is where you belong. That, that's how it yeah, looked. Thanks. Uh, so uh, a week, a week after uh, Zillow actually announced that they're pulling out of the iBuyer uh, business, which, mm -hmm. which was somewhat of a surprising announcement. What's your take on that? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely interesting for sure. Um, you know, I, like, I would say it was definitely surprising. Um, I think that it wasn't as surprising because like a few weeks before, obviously they're like, Hey, we're not going to buy any more homes this year. You know, we really just need to focus on the homes we have, you know, um, I think they had bought like 3,000 to 4,000 homes like in Q2. So they're like, you know, we've, we've got a lot of inventory, so we're just gonna take a pause. And then, you know, basically two weeks later, they're like, actually, no, we're, we're completely shutting this down. So um, yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot of takeaways. I think that, you know, it, we've all always known it's difficult to flip a house. Um, you know, like people always want to do it and often get, uh, kind of screwed over in the process, you know, it, it always costs more, it always takes longer. Um, you know, so I think that Zillow, you know, kind of just bit off more than they could chew. Um, you know, they, they bought a lot of homes. Um, we were seeing it in the market and it was something that we had been talking about kind of all year of the homes that they were purchasing, they were purchasing at or above market value. So like, yeah, there's some play of like, okay, once they have these listings and they're getting leads and on these listings that they're there, that then selling to agents and that's making them money. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I have lots of thoughts about it that I clearly am not articulating very well, but. Were you ever concerned about Zillow or iBuyers in general biting into your business? Um, yes and no. I mean, I think that like, you know, initially when Zillow first started out, 
back in 2018, one of the things that they had said was like their goal was for them to have 5% market share in the markets that they were in. Right. And like back then that was like 2018, I ran the numbers and like some of the largest brokerages in Houston barely had 5% market share. So like for me, I was like, okay, you know, like if that takes away maybe a transaction or two, okay. You know, but like, would I have lost that transaction to someone else anyways? Like perhaps. Right. Um, I think that for a lot of agents that were afraid of Zillow taking over their business, like, you know, I think you just need, I think they just need to like try harder. I don't know. I was like, that sounded harsh. I was going to like try to think of something nicer, but like, you know, I, I said back then and I, I, you know, Zillow is going to come back doing something else other than what they're doing. Like it's, it's, we all know that's true. Um, I think that Zillow and what they were offering, if it would have been scalable and sustainable, um, would have taken out the smaller brokerages or, you know, the smaller brokers that were selling 10 or less homes a year. You know, I mean, because when you look at Houston, you've got like 45,000 agents, you've got like a thousand that are selling the majority of homes in the market. You've got a decent percentage that are selling, you know, one to five, and then you have a few that may like maybe sell one. Right. So like that three or less, 10 or less homes, like those are going to be the people that would get wiped out by Zillow taking over yeah. 5% market share. They're not going to take it over now, but I mean, there's still licenses of brokerage in every province and state in the country. So like, they're not going away. Um, I think a lot of people Definitely. think that like Zillow pulling out of iBuying is them saying that like, Hey, you know, we're, we're shutting, shuttering our doors. And it's like, no, they're laying off 25% of their staff and they're going to come back with something else. And I think it's going to be brokerage and mortgage, but you know, well, time will only tell. Yeah, I think I uh, I would agree with you. Um, so they're definitely not going away and they're smart people and they have a lot of resources and they'll do something about it. I don't think they gave up on the idea of creating an end-to-end uh, consumer journey. So yeah, we, well, should, I mean, we should expect something. They already have the title company. They have the mortgage company. They have the brokerage. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. 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 So we're, we're coming up on the end of the year. Um, could you share some of your 2022 goals? Um, so we are actually in process of kind of formulating those now. Um, so in years past, um, I have made the goals and then told the team what they need to do to get there. Um, this year we're doing a little bit different. Um, they are all formulating their goals and where they want to be. And then I'm going to add those in together and see where that puts us. Um, and then, see with like my production where that does and then adding more agents where that puts us. So I'm, um, you know, letting everyone kind of write their own destiny, which is not generally how I operate or how I'm most comfortable, but uh, that's, that's our plan for 2022. It's, it's nice to see that you're trying to challenge yourself and evolve as, you know, as a, a manager or leader. <laughs> I mean, and That's you can tell I'm not very comfortable with it. I'm like, I'm <laughs> yeah, over yeah, here you're, you're kind of moving swerving and... <laughs> around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah. that's, so that's the plan. Um, you know, we'll end up this year, probably around 200, like closed and pending. So, you know, just in, in consideration of growth, like I want to sell more than 200 homes next year. So we'll see where it ends up once everyone, you know, tallies all of their numbers and then we'll see, you know, how many more agents we need to hire, how many more homes I need to sell and, you know, figure it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, we'll see. So talking about the future, uh, and we had a brief conversation about conversation about it, uh, two weeks ago, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Man, 10 years. That's a very long time. Well, you can try five. Let's, let's do five and then 10. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, I think that I will still be involved in the real estate space. Um, you know, it, it like, I really love this industry and the opportunities that it provides. Um, but I think that, you know, my role will definitely be different from where it is today. Um, so, you know, like today I still transact, I assist buyers and sellers, you know, I run the team um, and kind of do, you know, all of that as well. Um, so I think five to 10 years, I, I would hope that I'm no longer in production, um, but, you know, would be, you know, in more of kind of the, the managerial role um, and, you know, like we want to get into more like development and investing and, um, you know, building houses, building rentals, um, you know, purchasing commercial space and just kind of like diversifying the, the uh, portfolio a little bit. 
Yeah, going from being an agent to being a principal, essentially. Yeah, yeah. that's a good plan. Um, okay, Katie, um, we're going to see each other next week again. Uh, we're, we're, lucky me. Yeah, lucky me. I mean, the executive team of Real is going to be in uh, Dallas and San Antonio, so that's uh, that's exciting. So I'm excited about seeing you again next week, and uh, thank you very much for your time today. 